Hallelujah. Are you, did you come to worship God? Did you come to praise his name? Did you come to lift up the one that died for you? Did you come to praise him and give him glory? Hallelujah. Let's praise God with the praise team. Amen. Amen. If you feel like it, come up front. We got lots of room up here. Come up front. And let's worship God in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody clap, 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 clap. Here we go. Here we go. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, and this bag of bones. And I try with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Another one, I am free. Hey, I want you to church. Say, say, y'all say, church. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a freedom rise in the room. Say, hell.
So here we go. It says, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Y'all say. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. There be a praise Lord in here. Cause he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he changed Sounds beautiful here at Cross Creek. Forever free, I am not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Say again, I thank, I thank the master, I thank the savior.
praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has he shown himself powerful to you this year? Has he shown himself powerful to you in Jesus' name? Has he been powerful in your life? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's just spend a minute and praise him. Let's just spend a second and lift him up today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's, let's adore him this morning. Let's adore him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You are great and great and great. There is none like you, Lord. generation in this church that has no idea what I'm talking about. Time just moves on. Time just keeps going. There's no way to stop it. But we're coming to the time when that trumpet is going to sound. We're coming to the time when that trumpet is going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise. And we, we which remain, are going to be gathered together with him in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. Oh, I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking forward to that day. Praise God. Praise God. We celebrate this day because it's the first day of a new year. Amen? So we celebrate this day. We celebrated last night. Those of you who were here last night, what an awesome service we had. Amen. God was present in this place. Praise God. It was awesome. We celebrate this day as a new year. Praise God. And we thank God for another day and another year. Praise God. You know what it gives us the opportunity to do? Praise the Lord. Get something done for him. It gives us an opportunity to get involved. Get involved. Another opportunity to get involved. Who wants to be involved in the kingdom of God? Who wants to be involved in the kingdom of God? Praise God. God has got a mission for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm going to be quiet and ask the ushers to come up. This is your first opportunity to give your tithes and your offerings in 2023. I keep saying that because on Tuesday I'm going to have to go to work and start writing 2023 and not 2022. And i got to keep reminding myself what year it is. So... Did God bless you last year? When you gave, did God give back? Did God provide your needs in 2022? Amen? Well, let's begin 2023 by being a giving church. Let's begin 2023 by being a giving church. Amen? This is a form of worship. This is not a form of drudgery. This is not like paying your taxes where you grudge it and you wait till the last minute every every year before you write that check. This is something that we do joyfully. This is a form of worship. We thank God for what he's given us. And he's allowed us to give back to him in Jesus' name. So come and worship the Lord in your giving today. In Jesus' name. God bless you.
Can someone just raise your hand right here? Worship the king for a little bit right here. Y'all should know the song. The splendor of a king. Clothed in man. Let me hear y'all sing Cross Creek. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. Sounds beautiful. He raps, he raps. And darkness tries to hide. They tremble at his voice. They tremble. Let's race this like a big choir, choir cross creek. How great. Is our God. Sing with me. Is our God. All will see. believes we have we serve a great God this morning someone raise your hand right there someone knows we serve the faithful God this morning raise your hand right there he's been faithful for the years he's been faithful for the years lift your hands and give him that praise this morning how great you are today God I worship you I praise you I lift you up and I bless you this morning I'm going to start this new year off praising your name. I'm going to lift my hands and shout unto you with the voice of triumph. You are worthy of my praise this morning, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are the counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. Clap your hands and make a joyful noise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Come on, we need to show all the devils in hell how great our God is this morning. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you today. We exalt you this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I worship you, Father. I praise you. Amen. Aren't you glad you serve a great big God? Amen. Feels good to praise him. Feels good to lift him up. It's a brand new, new year. It's a new opportunity. As we talked about last night, to put old things behind us, to press towards the mark for the prize and the high calling of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let yesterday's troubles hold me back. I'm not going to allow situations and circumstances from yesterday to, hallelujah, to steal me and to rob from me my future, if you will. Hallelujah. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going to press on. I'm going to press on. I'm gonna press on. I'm gonna press on. I'm gonna press on. Come on, somebody. You've gotta put the old behind you. You've gotta press towards the mark for the prize and the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I think you need a little more light up here now. Praise God. Not that middle one, just the other ones. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's great to start the brand new year off in the house of the Lord. If you missed it last night, you missed it. We had a wonderful time in the Lord. The Holy Ghost fell. Amen. And we debuted a brand new choir. Amen. And they did a fantastic job. Amen. If you weren't here, I hope you'll go back and watch it online because we had a great time. The house was full. Hallelujah. I would to God that every service it was full. Amen. But thank God for you that are here this morning. Have your Bibles turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 29. And I want to read verse 1 through 11 in your hearing this morning. A little lengthy, so... Bear with us. Amen. The Bible says Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and 20 years old, and he reigned 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Praise God. It's great to be able to say you did something right. Praise God. He in the first five or the first year of his reign in the first month opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priest and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the Lord God of Israel. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, 
and to hissing as ye see with your eye. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you. For the Lord hath chosen you. For the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Praise God. Hezekiah, principal accomplishment was the restoration and the consecration and proper temple worship. Praise God. Amen. Restoration and consecration and proper temple worship. Amen. God has a way of doing things. And we want to make sure that we are in the center of his will. Amen. Not my will, Lord, but thine be done. Is that your prayer this morning? Let us pray. Father, we love you this morning. We're grateful for your power. We're grateful for your presence. We're grateful for your anointing today, God. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you in your temple, God, and lift up holy hands and lift up sanctified lives and present our bodies that living sacrifice that's holy and acceptable unto you. We pray today, Father, not our will, but thine be done as we start this brand new year. Let your blessings be upon us. Let your anointing rest upon us and let your will be accomplished. I pray in Jesus' name, and everybody shout amen. Amen. Clap your hands as you're seated this morning. Amen. Verse 5, he says, And he said to them, Hear me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Praise God. My title this morning is this is going to be a year of consecration. A year of consecration. A year of dedication to God. Amen. My hope is is that we would examine ourselves, that we would dedicate ourselves anew, that we would consecrate ourselves afresh to the work and to the will of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. I pray today the Bible tells us for every one of us to examine ourselves. Amen. Not that I would judge you or someone else would judge you, but that God would judge you. Amen. God sees everything. God knows everything. And we pray today that as we start this new year, that each of us would say, submit ourselves to God. And that each of us would consecrate ourselves to the Lord God Almighty. Can you say amen? amen. It got real quiet real quick. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me just turn to you and read to you another scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Many of you know this. In fact, I'm going to back up to verse 7. It says, unto you therefore which believe. Are you believers today? Yes. It says, he is precious. Who is precious? God is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, and being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. 
Amen. The word becomes a stumbling block to those that are disobedient to the word because they don't like what the word has to say. But it doesn't change the word. The word is forever settled. Amen. The word is forever settled in heaven and in earth. Amen. I don't want the word to become a stumbling block in, the walk, in my walk with God. But I want to do everything and become obedient to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. And then he goes on to say in verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called us away from the things of the world that we would dedicate ourselves and consecrate ourselves to the obedience of the word of God that I would show forth the praises, that I would lift up holy hands in the sanctuary, that I would shout unto him with the voice of triumph, that I would bless his name, that I would magnify him, that I would present myself unto the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Back in Hezekiah's day, amen, he was instructed to sanctify the Levites. If you know about the 12 tribes of Israel, it was the Levites that ministered and took care of the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not any old body could just go in and do the work, in, amen, in the tabernacle. But you had to be chosen by God. Amen. And part of that being chosen was your lineage or your what tribe you came from. And it was ordained by God that the Levites were to take care of the precious things of God. And God is telling us today that he has bought us with his blood. I said God called you and God bought you with his blood. Hallelujah. And he says to the church of the living God today that you are not your own no longer, but you are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And he says, therefore, you should glorify him. Therefore, you should praise him. Therefore, you should lift up holy hands to him. Therefore, you should present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. I'm going to dedicate myself to you, Jesus. I'm going to consecrate myself to you, God. Whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to submit to it. I'm going to present myself to it. I'm going to get in this thing with all my heart with all my mind with all my soul with all my strength why because you have redeemed me you have saved me from the curse of the law hallelujah you have redeemed my soul i give you praise i bless your holy name there is nothing god too great that i would not do for you are you glad that he called you out of darkness? Are you glad that he filled you with the Holy Ghost? Are you glad that he put your sins as far as the east is from the west? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we're really glad, then it's easy for us to submit to the calling of God. Hallelujah. See, oftentimes we think, well, I've repented. Check. I've done that. I've been baptized, check, I've done that. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, check, I've done that. I've made it. You've not made it. I've not made it. But I've got to continue to present myself to the Lord. I've got to continue to walk in his ways. 
I got to continue to walk with him every single day. I got to continue to repent of my sins and ask him to forgive me of my iniquities. I've got to continue to say, God, not my will, but thine be done. I've got to continue to consecrate myself and dedicate myself to the things of God. Otherwise, my carnal nature takes over, and I don't want to present myself to God. and I don't want to walk with God. I want to do things my way. But God is telling us in his word that he's got a way. Hallelujah. And it's his way. Amen. It's his way this morning. He's wanting us to present ourselves to him. He's wanting us to consecrate ourselves to him. Brothers and sisters, that's the power, as Brother Vogler was just alluding to, as, as the Holy Ghost, amen, or God is getting ready to come after his church. The Holy Ghost is rising up within each and every one of us. And it's a testimony that there's something getting ready to happen. There's something getting ready to take place. God is coming back after a people that have made themselves ready. A people that are called by his name. A church that is without spot. A church without wrinkle. A church without blemish. A bride adorned for her husband. Church, you are the bride of Christ. God God is wanting you to get ready to meet the bridegroom. God is wanting you to consecrate yourself and to dedicate yourself to the things of God that because the bridegroom is coming. It's not a day to live haphazard for the Lord. It's not a day to say there's no need for holiness in the church. There's not a day, amen, to neglect the assembling of ourselves together. But it's a day to get ourselves ready to meet the master. It's a day to consecrate ourselves to him. Amen. This is going to be a year that we are going to get all closer to God. A year that I'm going to consecrate myself. A year that I'm going to make sure I got my sins under the blood. A year to make sure that I'm walking in the path that God wants me to walk. Praise God. Praise God. A year of consecration. The Hebrew word for, for sanctification or to sanctify means is Kadesh. And the Greek word is Hagizo. Amen. And it's translated in several English words, but our English words for those two Hebrew and Greek words is holy, to consecrate ourselves, to hallow, to sanctify, to dedicate. Amen. To make holy, to consecrate, to hallow, to sanctify, to dedicate. Amen. To dedicate ourselves to God, to make ourselves presentable to God, to consecrate ourselves. Amen. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Help me to be what you want me to be. When I talk about consecration, consecration means, amen, persons or things being separated to or belonging to God. You see, all the way back in the Old Testament, amen, Israel, God wanted to be the center of Israel's life. Amen. He wanted them to look to him for everything. But Israel wanted to be like the other nations of the world, and they wanted a king. Amen. And because they were so hard-hearted, if you will, God granted them their desire for a king and gave him King Saul. Amen. Hallelujah. And we know that David began after King Saul. Amen. But it was never the will of God for Israel to have a king because God wanted Israel to recognize him as the king of kings and him as the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. But because of their persistence, he gave in, and he gave them the king. And as you read through kings, and as you read through chronicles, you will find that many of the kings did not do that which was right in the sight of God. And many of them turned away, and many of them served other gods that wasn't Jehovah God. 
Hallelujah. They worshiped Baal and they worshiped all the other idols of the, the land, if you will. And that's what happens when the church turns their back and turns away from God. They begin to worship other things. And God is sending a message this morning. And I'm preaching to Cross Creek today. It's not a day to turn to other gods. It's a day to separate ourselves. It's a day to draw nigh to God. It's a day to come out of the world. It's a day to lift up the name of Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men nigh. It's a day to present ourselves to the King of kings and the Lord of lords and say, God, I want to live the way you want me to live. I want to act the way you want me to act. I want to do the things you want me to do. I realize that you're coming and you're coming soon. I want to be part of the bride. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to meet you. Amen. Uh, when people or things were consecrated, the Bible tells us that they were separated to or they belonged to. They belong to God. Hallelujah. I just want to remind us again that God has separated us from the world. I said God has separated us from the world. We're not to look like the world. We're not to act like the world. We're not to do the things that are in the world. But we are to come out. He said, come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. He said, and I will receive you. Yes. Hallelujah. It's time to come out. Yes. I said, it's time to come out. Yes. It's time to present ourselves to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. In Levit Leviticus 19 and 2, it says, you shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord God, am holy. If we are going to have fellowship with a holy God, we also must be in a holy relationship with our Lord. Praise God. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy. I can't say it any plainer. It's the word of God. It's not do what you want to do. Amen. And think that this is important and that's important. Something else is not important. It is all important. Every word in this book is important. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell the church that God is getting his bride ready. Amen. I don't know about you, but, you know, um, when I got married, my wife spent a lot of time getting ready. She was late to her own wedding, like most brides are. But she was in there dolling herself up, trying to make herself look a special way, trying to make herself look appealing. Amen. She could have worn a blue jean dress. I didn't care. We's getting married. Amen. But not her. She bought that fancy dress, and she had everything planned, and she told me not to upset her plans. Amen. Just, just show up and go on and go through with it. And I said, yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. And it must have did pretty good because it's been, what, 37 years, and we're still walking together down the same road. Brothers and sisters, God is getting his church ready. I said, God is getting his church ready. There's a way he wants his bride to look. There's a way he wants his bride to act. He There's a way that he wants his bride to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He doesn't want us looking like the world. Yes. He doesn't want us acting like the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> I guess I... I just feel it in my spirit that I need to come a little down to earth where we live. But there, there's just some things that places you don't need to go if you're a Christian. 
The others may go there and, you know, the Christian world say, oh, there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong with this. Well, you're not serving other religions. You're serving God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I remember when I first came to Laurel, I was working on a job. Amen. I worked for a printing company. One day the, pr the boss came to me and said, because I was the only one over 21, Amen. He said, would you go across the street and buy some beer for everybody? <laughs> I said, no, I can't do that. <laughs> and he looked at me real funny like, why not? I said, because I don't go to taverns and I don't go to liquor stores. <laughs> I said, I'm a man of God. I'm a preacher. I said, and what would my saints think if they saw me walking out of that liquor store with a 12-pack in my hand? I could say everything. I oh, it wasn't for me. It's for my my for my boss's employee. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's just some things you don't do as a Christian, Amen. Because you've been called out of darkness. You've been called into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. We've got to take a stand and say, you may do it and they may do it. Amen. And, oh, I'm going to get on somebody's hobby horse right now. But praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord dropped it in my spirit, so I'm going to say it. Amen. It's not okay to drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. There's a lot of teetotaling so-called Christians that think it's all right to sit down and have wine or beer with their dinner. It's not okay. Amen. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. A little bit of sin makes the whole life sinful, if you will. And the Lord says, amen, whether it takes one beer or two beers or one glass of wine or two glasses of wine or 15 glasses to get you drunk, amen, you're one-tenth of the way drunk with one glass. And the Bible calls you a drunkard. And the Bible says no drunkard's going to enter in to the kingdom. Amen. I'm here to tell you, it's time to come out. It's time to come out. It's time to come out. It's time to come out and present ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies, there's a way God wants you to look. Some of you aren't going to like this, but the Bible says for a woman not to wear things that pertain to a man. And if you go back in Scripture, you find out that's also talking about pants. I'm just going to nail it all today. You say you're being a clothesline preacher. No, I'm getting the bride ready. I said, I'm preaching to the bride today. Those that really want to be what God wants them to be. Amen. The Bible tells the woman not to wear things that pertain to a man. It also says for a woman not to cut her hair. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't snip off a little bit. The Bible says if you cut it a little bit or trim it, you might as well shave your whole head. You know who shaved their heads in the Bible? Harlots shaved their heads in the Bible. Mm, I, I, got, mm, I stepped on it, didn't I? Amen. That's all right. You better stop cutting your hair. You better take the make off, uh, makeup off and the jewelry off. You and put on, quit putting on men's apparel. Amen, because it's time to look like the church. It's time to act like the church. It's time to come out uh, from among the world. It's time to be a separate people. I don't care if I empty the whole church out. Amen, because all of you are going to hear what thus saith the word of God. You may get mad at me for preaching like this, but it's in the book, brothers and sisters. I said it's in the book, and it's time to consecrate. It's time to dedicate. It's time to come out from the world. It's time to present your yourself to God. We don't have time to play church. We don't have time to fool around. It's time to get ready to meet the bridegroom. Amen. Praise God. Wasn't the kind of New Year's message you was expecting, was it? That's all right. It's time to get ready. 
Amen. It's time to separate from the world. It's time to dedicate ourselves to God. Amen. Separation from the world and dedication to God is the very first principle in the Bible after you get the Holy Ghost. You see, we, we think, I, got, I repented, I got baptized, I got the Holy Ghost, I've got it made. Well, then you have to present yourself to God, and you have to act like God wants you to act and look like the way God wants you to look. Amen. Praise God. So we must come to the realization that God is in charge, and we must be willing to submit ourselves to his word. He's not going to make you do it. I'm not going to make you do it. And I'm not going to be your policeman, but I am going to stand behind this pulpit and preach to you the word of God. And what you do with it is your business because you're going to give an account for everything that I preach to you. Amen. Submit ourselves. We don't like that word because we don't want to submit ourselves to anybody or anything. I'm going to do it my way. I don't care what anybody says. Hello. But you better submit yourself to the word of God, and you better submit yourself to his will. Hallelujah. Remember how many times you pray, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Well, if you really mean it, then you better begin to act like it. I'm going to give you some scripture because... So far, you probably think it's all my philosophy. Amen. Second Corinthians 6, 17. He says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen. Chapter 7, verse 1 said, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We've got to have more fear of God in our lives than we do, amen, hallelujah, the love for the world, amen, praise God. Many cannot know the will of God or see God's eternal plan, amen. Many of us, we think that doctrine and consecration are unnecessary in our present world because of our situation or circumstances, but we need to understand today Amen. Hallelujah. That we need to begin to see things from God's perspective and not from our perspective. And that God has a plan and God put that plan into motion. Amen. Before the foundations of the world were even created. Amen. Hallelujah. Many of us understand all these things, but it doesn't change our behavior. Amen. But what we really need today is a revelation of the word of God and the will of God. The church needs a revelation today of the word of God and the plan of God. If we really had a revelation, we would have a fear of God on the inside of us that would propel us to do the right things and to act the right way and to say the right things and to present ourselves before him. God, give us a revelation. We need spiritual revelation. We must see Jesus. Hallelujah. John, in his revelation of Jesus Christ, he was shown two extremes. Amen. Two worlds that were opposites, if you will. He was first carried away in the spirit in the wilderness, and he saw Babylon, the great. The Bible calls her the mother of harlots and the abominations that filled the earth. Hallelujah. That's the worldly system. You can read about it in chapter 17, verse 3. And then he was carried away by the same spirit to a great and high mountain where he saw the Jerusalem and the bride and the lamb's wife. In chapter 21, verse 10. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. There it is. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Brothers and sisters, if we're going to have fellowship with a holy God, we must be holy. 
Amen. Hallelujah. There is a church and there is a bride that is coming back with the Lord Jesus. Amen. To put an end to all of Satan's reign. Hallelujah. But it's not going to be a weak church. It's not going to be a pansy church. But it's going to be a people that's called by the name of Jesus. A people that are strong in the power of his might. A people who know their God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming after a church that's prepared for him. Hallelujah. And when he comes, amen, he's coming for a people, amen, that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that are not ashamed to look the way he wants them to look and to do the things that he wants them to do and to go where he wants them to go. <laughs> Praise God. Ephesians 4, verse 22. I'm throwing this in on you, see? Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. The Bible says that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Conversation is really talking about, amen, how you live. Amen. Not so much as what you say which is corrupt according to this deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye may put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that steals, steal no more, but rather let him labor, hello, get a job, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may, that he may to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication, hello, let no corrupt communication. Let there be no cussing amongst the saints of the Most High. Let there be no gossip. Let there be no sharpness of the tongue. Amen. Proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. If it doesn't build somebody up, then don't say it. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. <laughs> That's not my word, that's his. Chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Didn't say when you wanted to. Didn't say when things are going good. Love them all the time. As Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ loves us, whether we do right or we do wrong. Hello. Hallelujah. You got a husband, you got to love your wife, whether they do right or do wrong. And wives, you got to love your husbands and submit to your husbands. Oh, we don't like that, do we? I don't know how many times I've been asked to drop that out of the marriage vows. I refuse. part about obeying your husband. I've told my wife many a time, she brags and says, you may be the head, but I'm the neck that turns the head. That may be true. She is the influencer. But there has been times that I disagreed with her. And I said, "You, I thank you for your, your advice, but I'm going to do it my way. And oftentimes, I found out she was right all the time. I hate to, I hate to admit that. Somebody got to say amen. 
Praise God. But the Bible also says it's a wise man that will listen to the counsel of his wife. Hallelujah. That's why the two of you were put together. Amen. Praise God. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That God might sanctify or make holy or separate. Separate us by the cleansing and the washing of the word. I said this last night a little bit. Amen. The reason you need to be in church every service. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is because faith is preached in this pulpit. Amen. And you're going to hear things that you're not going to hear outside these four walls. And the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. <laughs> by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. You receive faith even when you don't realize you're receiving faith. Hallelujah. Because the word is contrary to the natural things. The Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. For they are foolishness unto him. Amen. Coming to church is foolishness to an atheist. Lifting up holy hands to some folks is ridiculous. Some of them say, well, why do you all get so excited? Why do you clap and run the aisles and shout and do all that stuff like you're at a football game or a baseball game or something? Because God has redeemed me. Because God has brought me out of darkness. Because God has put something holy on the inside of my heart. I've got a right to praise him. I've got a desire to praise him. I've got an ability to praise him. As long as there's breath in my lungs and, and I can lift my hands, I'm going to lift my hands and praise my God. Hallelujah. Because this is one individual that is thankful for where God brought him from. This is one individual that is saying, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say I want to present myself to you I want to hear you one day tell me well done thou good and faithful servant hallelujah whatever it is God I want to give it to you praise God praise God clap your hands to him The harlot Babylon was called the great city. You can read about it in chapter 16, verse 19. And her emphasis were on the attainment of greatness. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan always wants to exalt himself above God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, then the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Hallelujah. Amen. Babylon always wants to pollute the things of God. For everything that God has, the devil has a counterfeit for. Hallelujah. We must make up our mind that we are going to be spiritual individual individuals, that we are not going to do the things of Babylon, but we are grateful that God has called us and God has chosen us and God has redeemed us and God has made us holy. Hallelujah. Jerusalem, by contrast, is called the holy city in chapter 21, verse 2 and verse 10. Amen. With, with an accent correspondingly on her separation to God. Amen. Jerusalem coming down from God. She separated herself. That's talking about, amen, the bride of Christ coming back with the Lord. If you know anything about Revelation, amen, in the end time, amen, after the tribulation period, the church is coming back with the Savior, amen. The church is coming back to rule and to reign. And the church, hallelujah, oh, praise God. Uh, I, I don't want to get off on, on 
eschatology this morning. But as I've been preaching, the last time I preached on a Thursday night, we preached about the rapture of the church. Brothers and sisters, the rapture is getting ready to take place. The rapture is getting ready to take place. He said he's coming after a bride that has adorned herself, a bride that's without spot, a bride that's without wrinkle, a bride that's without blemish, a bride that is holy, a bride that's separated unto him, a bride that's called by his name. We are the people of the name. We are the people of the name of Jesus Christ. The thing that separates us from the denominal world is the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the people of the name. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, let me just tell you a little bit. Amen. The denominal world, amen, picked up the 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 idea of the patriarch church back around 325 AD. You can look in the history book where the Catholic Church changed the water formula baptism from Father, from the name of Jesus Christ to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And they presented the idea of three in one. I don't know how you get three gods in one God, but the Bible tells us there's only one God. Hear, O Israel, our, the Lord our God is one. There's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's not 15 different ways to be saved. There's one way, and that's God's way. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. Amen. That's the way. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go down in the waters of baptism, you go down in the name of Jesus Christ. For all power in heaven and earth is in the name of Jesus. If the name is not pronounced over you in the waters of baptism, you've gone down a dry center and you've come up a wet center because the power is in the name of Jesus. And if the name of Jesus is not pronounced over you, your sins have not been remitted. He's coming back after a people called by his name. That's how you get the name applied. When the bride takes her vows, she takes on the name of the bridegroom. Hallelujah. Likewise, when you go down in the waters of baptism, you take on the name of the bridegroom. Another scripture just popped into my mind. They're going to stand before the Lord at judgment day and it says, we've done many mighty works in thy name. We've cast out devils in thy name. We've laid hands on the sick in thy name. We've cast out devils in thy name. Hello. And there's plenty of people in the denominal world that are doing just that. But the Bible says he's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You say, how can that be? They did all these wonderful things in the name of God. It's going to be because they never obeyed the word. And they never took on the name of the bridegroom. And therefore, the bridegroom is going to say, I don't know who you are. You're not, you're not part of my bride. You never took my name. And he's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Mm. You think it's important to have a revelation of the name of God? You better believe it. 
You think it's important how you were baptized? You better believe it. You think it's important how you lived your life? You better believe it. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Back in that verse in Revelation 21, it says she, that the bride, she is from God and is prepared for her husband. Whew. Prepared for her husband. Amen. Hallelujah. Holiness in us is what is of God. And what is holy sets us apart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I know when I preach on holiness, many people say, well, God knows my heart. Well, yeah, he does, but he also said that your heart is desperately wicked. (laughs) I know my heart, Pastor. No, you don't. Only God knows your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I, I think that verse is talking about Holiness on the inside, because God looks on the inside. He's not worried about the outside. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because if you got something holy living on the inside, it's going to affect the outside. Because you can't be holy on the inside without it affecting the outside. Woo, Hallelujah. If God really lives in your heart, it's going to affect how you live. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are of God. Glorify God in your body and your spirit. The Lord is just telling you right there, your spirit, if your spirit is holy, it's going to govern your body. 1 Peter 1.16 Because it is written... Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. We could say, be ye separate, for I am separated. Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If we don't live holy, he says we're not going to see him. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a royal priesthood. You are not your own. God has called you to serve him. God has called you out of darkness. God has ordained you to be a minister in his kingdom. I said, God has ordained you to take on his name, to present your bodies that living sacrifice, to say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'm asking you this morning to examine yourself in this new year. I'm asking you, amen, to make a declaration in your walk with God that I'm going to do it God's way and not my way. I'm going to submit myself to the word of God. 
I'm going to submit myself to the man of God. Because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. And if I never preach this message again, I've already preached it to you. So you are without excuse when I stand before God and I present you to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to say I preached it, but they didn't live it. I couldn't make them do it. They, I, they heard me preach it. Father, but they didn't live it. It's up to you today to present yourself. It's up to you today to get a holy fear of God. It's up to you today to say, God, not my will, but thine be done. I know I'm preaching a little strong this morning. I could preach a little stronger. But I think I'm getting my point across. This isn't a day to live According to your will. But it's a day to sanctify yourselves to God. It's a day to draw near to God. It's a day to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. And to prepare for the coming of the bridegroom. I'm trying to get the church ready to meet the bridegroom. I feel an unction in my spirit this morning. I feel a demand in my spirit this morning to preach to you no matter if you like it or you don't like it. I'm going to preach it to you because you got to get ready. I've got to get ready. I can't miss the rapture. I can't miss the hallelujah. I can't miss the bridegroom when he comes. I want to hallelujah. I want to be sensitive to what God is doing. I want to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I want to be sensitive and say, God, not my will, but thine be done. I want to hear the trumpet sound, the trumpet when it sounds. He said the dead in Christ are going to arise, and we which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I've got to be sensitive enough to hear the blowing of the trumpet because he's coming in the hour that you think not. No man knows the day. No man and knows the hour when the Son of Man is going to come. But we've got to present ourselves. we got to be ready to meet the bridegroom, if you will. Hallelujah. Because he said the trumpet's going to sound. And he said in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye, the dead in Christ are coming up out of the grave. And we're going to rise to meet him in the air. You're not going to have time to repent. You're not going to have time to get ready. The day is the day of salvation. And now is the appointed time and he said I've called all men to repent hallelujah come on lift your hands stand to your feet lift your hands give God the glory give God the praise we need you Jesus we need you Jesus we need you today God not our will but thine be done Hatsayando robo hotoi, he yara mahai, a kayondoi, he la rama hatai, a sokoi yatai yara mahai, he sayoro mo hotoi yandara mahai. Yea, my children, I say unto you. You have heard my servant this day, and I call unto you, and I come nigh to you, and I knock on your heart's door. I say unto you, if you will hear my voice and open up the doors of your heart, I will come in, and I will have fellowship with you. I will be your God, and you will be my people, and I will show you great and mighty things, for I am the Lord your God. Hmm. Come on, praise him. Praise him this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you today, God. We praise you this morning. We consecrate ourselves to you. We dedicate ourselves to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This altar is open. If any of you would like to come, lift up your voice. Maybe make a renewed dedication, a renewed consecration. We just step out from where you're at. Come down to this altar. Lift up your hands. Give God praise today.